In this video, we are going to look into the fundamental concepts of topology. The fundamental concepts are very important as they are the building blocks for this particular subject. They are also important because if you are going forward to go deep into the advanced study of topology, they serve as the basic building block and they are important in order to go for further research and development. The fundamental concepts of topology are a little bit abstract. So what I have done is that I have used a little bit of visual aids in order to make you understand about the concepts, the evolution process, the different shapes and structures and the underlying theorem and the mathematics of it. As far as the mathematics of this video is concerned, I have kept it pretty simple and I have used mostly visual demonstrations so that visual aids always serve as a better understanding process. I have kept it simple only to the basic set theory and that's it. My name is Shaunak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students and I welcome you to watch this video. Before we go ahead and start going deep into the subject, first let us look into what are the topics that we are covering. So first we need to understand why do we at all need topology? What is the evolution process and what how the evolution of mathematical spaces from Euclidean space to metric space and topological space took place? What is topology and how do we can define topology and topological space in terms of intuitive and mathematical definitions? What are intervals? What are closed set and open set? So this would be our agenda and I think that it is a good time to start and go ahead in learning those concepts. First of all, before going ahead, the most important thing that we need is that why do we at all need the subject topology? I mean to say, if there is no topology, then what could have been the problem? If you look into the technological development of human civilization or as a whole human race, you will always find that the technological development have taken place in order to make things easier. Each and every technology starting from uh, electronics to gadgets to communication and everything these have been made in order to make things pretty easy. And topology is also not an exception. So if you look into these developments, the basic objective was to make and try to make things easy. Also the gadgets which evolved slowly became smaller, which was earlier a little bit larger. And it also served on all purpose. It is not specific that it would serve a specific purpose like washing machine, or uh, communication like talking over telephone. So it became an all purpose. Most importantly, it became easier to use and it became very user friendly. And most important, but last point is that we always, the human civilization technological advancement, tried to make things more portable. Now you might be wondering that, am I teaching you history? No. But before going into topology, we need to understand that because topology is also a human advancement, a thinking and a critical thinking advancement which made mathematics much more easier, all purpose, easier to use, user friendly and mathematics became more portable. So as you see on your figure, this is an old cathode ray tube computer which was further generalized and became easy into a laptop. This I think you must have, you must have seen or maybe somebody, some people you also have this in Nokia, I think 3310C, if I'm not wrong, with the model number. This has now got into a smartphone. The uh, television, which used to be huge in size, now became a smartphone. And now we can use the communication for various purposes. We can use mobile not only for talking, but we can use for telephone, for communication, for messaging, for live videos and everything. Same goes with television and with a laptop. So on a smart TV, now we can use pen drives and whatnot. So the bottom line is that these things become more generalized. Uh, obviously, things become more smaller. And most importantly, they become platform independent. That means if you go with technology, for example, C, C++, Java, as they moved up the ladder, you will see that most of these softwares became platform independent and became browser oriented so that it can run anywhere independently without the need of a certain operating system. 
topology also serves the purpose of becoming generalized and platform independent as we will see in the next part of our video. So this is something which is very important if you consider the development of scientific process. Maxwell's equations was further generalized by Albert Einstein in his special theory of relativity. The Newtonian gravity which was generalized into a space-time curvature by Albert Einstein in general relativity. The Euclidean postulates was further generalized into what is called a non-Euclidean uh, uh, geometry by Nikolai Lobachevsky and the Euclidean axioms got generalized into topological axioms which is the main purpose of this video. So up till now what I tried to tell you is that with the development of science and technology there has been certain changes. The changes are becoming portable, much more generalized and becoming platform independent. And exactly that is what topology has done. Now, if you see the sh shape of the objects, I have shown this in my previous video also. If you have missed the last video, which is basically on the concepts and, you know, basic concepts of topology, I have given it in the I button. You can just go there and click uh, on it. And the cup as well as this ball, these all can be turned into other shapes like circle or a square. And a rectangle or into any kind of a shape. How it has been termed, what is the geometry and what is the underlying mathematics, I am not going into it, but assume that these can be turned uh, using homeomorphism and other uh, technical things, it can be turned into any shape. So, what I am trying to tell is that a circle is topologically equivalent to a square, which is again equivalent to a rectangle, but remember that they are geometrically they are the same but topologically they are different. I mean to say this, uh, the topologically they are equivalent but geometrically they are the same. So topological equivalence doesn't mean that geometrically they have to be the equivalent but remember that geometrically they are different. Now if I go into the next part of our video what I am trying to show is that this torus, this cup and this ball when they turn into circle and rectangle and square or generalized into any kind of a shape, then these takes form of a, a cup, of a sphere, and this kind of shape, a torus, or a, a torus which has got three holes, that is called genus three. So the basic idea, what I am trying to tell is that, it takes any shape, it takes any size, it is becoming a free form, that means I can, I can change these structures into anything, it becomes metric independent. That is the most important part. That means I do not have to measure. Uh, definitely I am going to measure. But I am not going to measure those distance. Or the angles or whatsoever. On a particular metric. That is a meter or a centimeter. Whatever. The metric will become independent. And without the notion of distance. Now what do I mean by the notion. Without the notion of distance. That will come in the next part of our video. So once we see these shapes are uh, deformed into any other shape. It can be Euclidean uh, Cartesian coordinate shapes, it can be non-Euclidean shapes, but if I take all those shapes and if I deform them by stretching and bending and uh, there is definitely certain rule, then why I am doing is that I am trying to get a metric free, distance free system. That means I am not going to depend on any specific metric or a specific distance which we call it a distance, but the measurements will be invariant. I have talked about topological invariant in my last video, which you can see in my playlist. So the basic purpose is just like technological advancements. Mobile is no more a mobile. It is serving further uh, purposes. Uh, television is no more a television. It is serving multiple purposes. So it has become television, mobile, all this technology has become metric free. But the measurements and the purpose is the same. Same goes with topology. Here comes the reason that why do we need topology. So in topology, because it talks about the notion of closeness, which is technically called neighborhoods, which in turn allows us to talk about things such as continuity, convergence, compactness and connectedness without the notion of distance. So topology generalizes fundamental concepts of analysis and capitalism. So, if you look closely into the definition below, 
that means the topology is going to generalize certain concepts and the continuity convergence and connectedness these will definitely be there but without the notion of distance why without the notion of distance because distance means it uh, we are depending on a specific metric and the whole purpose of technological advancement is to become metric free and topology is not an exception so now we will see that how these distance or measuring free will become clear to us now if we take this shapes i am going to say normal shapes which are euclidean shapes for example if i take a circle a cube a rectangle and a square and if i take even a triangle then what we can see is that there is another set of uh, you know deformed objects or non euclidean shapes like a torus and a cup or i can take a sphere or any other different kind of shapes which emerges so you have one set of uh, you know uh, shapes which are typically cartesian or typically euclidean and you have another set of uh, shapes which are non euclidean so what happens is that we move from euclidean to non euclidean so from specific shapes we are now moving into irregular shapes why we are making irregular shapes we, we will soon see that so from euclidean axioms definitely we need topological axioms because euclidean axioms in specific shapes won't work in irregular shapes and also from metric system we are moving into a broader system which is called a topological space so up till now what i tried to show you is that uh, as far as the technological advancement and things are going uh, in advanced nature is concerned the topology is also an advancement in term of human thinking that we are generalizing and we are trying to get something which is called uh, you know metric free and for that we need a different kind of a system and for that we need a different kind of a space why because the euclidean and the cartesian rules won't be allowed in the space how do we form that kind of a space that is coming up in this part of the video when we talk about topology and topological space so euclidean space first what we need is that we need to define what is a topology okay so once we define a topology we study in general if you look it is called a study concerned with the shape of geometrical objects so from the euclidean space what we are trying to do is that we are moving into topological space why because we need to frame a new space a new set of rules that these uh, geometrical or deformed or different type of weird objects will take place so topological space is a generalization of euclidean space in which the idea of closeness limits is described in terms of relationship between sets rather than in terms of distance so here comes the basic crux of topology and topological space that we need to form a kind of a rule that all these things will be measured but in terms of relationship between sets and that is why set theory is predominant in working out topological mathematics and in terms of in terms of distance we won't measure we would measure in terms of sets set theory being the predominant mathematics of topology helps you to give a much more broader scale differential geometry being a local candidate looks into differential calculus but here we are dealing with much more broader forms so what we need is a topology okay first we will quickly define what is a euclidean space and get a basic concept so that the movement would become smooth so euclidean space is basically the fundamental space of geometry intended to represent physical space originally that is in euclid's elements it was in three dimensional space of euclidean geometry but nowadays you will see in modern mathematics there are euclidean spaces of any positive integer dimension the qualified euclidean is used to distinguish euclidean spaces from other spaces that were later considered in physics and modern mathematics right on your screen you can see a kind of a schematic diagram of a euclidean space and from euclidean space we go into metric space a set together with notion of distance 
between its elements usually called points. So in Euclidean space we measure points but in metric space this distance is measured by a function called a metric or a distance function. So in metric space definition if I talk of the definition itself metric space is a set together with a notion of distance uh, between elements called points. The distance is measured by a function called a metric or a distance function. Metric spaces are the most general setting for studying many of the concepts of mathematical analysis and geometry. So here you see if a metric space x together with a function d which assigns a real number dx of y which shows that x and y is an element of x which satisfies one the distance from a point to itself is zero which means this the distance between two distinct points should always be positive so it should be greater than zero and the distance from x to y is always the same which means this one so x and y and y x are the same and it obeys the triangle in so this is how the metric space definition is important that we are using most importantly this t which is a metric or a distance function. So why we are uh, mentioning all those metric because now you will see how the migration becomes more. So till up, up till now metric space definition is using the function d and it obeys 1, 2, 3 and 4 triangle inequality conditions. Okay, let us see quickly some examples of matrix spaces. The real number of the distance function gives the absolute distance. Euclidean space R2 can have different metrics. For example, this one, the taxi cab distance is given by this one. I have not shown Euclidean distance because it is too rudimentary and can be understood by any class going, school going person. So these are some of the examples of metric space. So where have we gone? So from Euclidean space, we have moved into metric space which is uh, the real numbers and uh, it measures with the distant function d and now we move into something which is called a topological space. So topological space it generalizes the structure set in Euclidean space. It the concept of distance now we won't call it distance between two points we call it closeness and a space where those elements of set are called points. It is a most general type of mathematical space that allows the definition of limits, continuity and connectedness and it formalizes the concept of nearness and continuity. So a brief up till now, this is how the migration and the movement takes place. So from Euclid we move to metric which is where the distance is measured by a function and now this distance is measured by closeness and a space where these elements will be there these will be called points and most importantly right at the bottom of your screen generalizes the concept of analysis and calculus. So whatever we are now doing as you see it is constantly generalizing, making things broader, making things easy and that is why it is portable and as you see I started with the history of technological advancement topology is also the same. Okay, so First is that how do we make up a definition in topology? Now you see when we talk of a definition in topology, uh, I would like to use an analogy that there are certain characteristics which if an object or a specific genre that specifies or they have, then we name that object or genre something else. For example, if I take a frog, okay. In general, frogs have a protruding eyes, no tail and strong, you know, webbed hind feet that are adaptable for leaping and swimming and they also possess a smooth, moist skin. So these are the characteristics which make a uh, frog. So lions similarly have strong, compact bodies and powerful four legs. Teeth and jaws are pulling down and killing prey, something like this. Even, a, uh, you know, a tiger uh, you would be warm-hearted, you are fearsome, uh, you know, courageous in the face of a danger, yet yielding and soft and mysterious, all those characters. So, if we see a lion and a tiger, we cannot say each of them are of the same. Why? Because each of them has a specific characteristic, right? So, as I told that lions have to be strong, compact, this, 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 
and a tiger has to be this, 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 and an aquatic animal has to be this. So that is why these cannot be the same. So topology, like other branches of pure mathematics, such as group theory, is an axiomatic subject. So what do I mean by axiomatic? That there is a definition. So we start with a set of axioms and we use these axioms to prove propositions and theorems. So a definition, it should be there and it should certainly satisfy certain conditions and then we call it that, okay, this definition is true or false or whatsoever. So this is how we make up a definition in topology that it has to satisfy certain characteristics. So I just tried to try to give you an example with uh, these, these uh, you know, animals and so. Okay, so what is a topology and what is a topological space? So first let us see that if X be a non-empty set, don't worry, I will just give you a visual aid. A set of T of subsets of X is said to be on topology on X if that means what are the conditions? 1. X and the M set 5 belongs to 2. T. 2. The union of any number of sets of T belongs to T. And the intersection of any two sets in T belongs to C. So now let us see how we can uh, demonstrate it visually. Now this pair X and T is called a topological space. Now here is a set X. Here is my subset T. And if I consider phi to be empty and X is a non-empty set. So, I just given any random numbers, 1, 2, etc. This is what this is, right? So, X and the empty set, this one. Now, as because it is saying that any number of union of sets in T belongs to T, so I have just uh, measure, uh, named it set 1, set 2, any number of, you know, uh, the union. So, yeah. So, the intersection as well as the union, all of them belongs to T. Uh, and this is just a mathematical thing. This entire part, the pair X and T is called a topological space. I hope so from the mathematical definition, what we have seen that uh, X and the MC set phi belongs to TT. This would give you a better understanding that what phi is, what X is an empty set and how the set intersection and the union belongs to T. And this entire uh, figure which is in red marked is called a topological space. Okay few examples would make things clear. So now let us see, for example, if I take x equals to abc. Now what I am trying to do is that first I am going to give you a visual demonstration of what is the topology and then I will come to the mathematical part. So abc means we have learned that these elements in a set is are basically points. So let us see if I take a set like this and abc, this can be one topology. Again, I say take a set round like this. So, uh, the subset and I take this one can be a topology, this one and this one. Yes, this can also be a topology. And this one, the, the, the subset A and B, this can also be a topology. Let us say, again, we take uh, this one and then we form this one and B, C also taken together. Again, again, we see A and then we take C, B and C, this can also be a topology. And then again we take A, B and C and within that we form another B subset. This can also be a topology. So I just try to show you that when you will be, be going with mathematical examples, this comes as a very important part. So taking X equals to A, B, C, which means that these are the three points, we have shown how different topologies can be formed. Now, let us look into the language of mathematics, but pretty easy. So, if we take x equals to a, b, c, d, e, f and t1, uh, say for example, uh, we take those, uh, you know, values, then first one, the x and the empty set phi, let us see x and the a, b, c, d, phi, yes, it belongs to t, so this condition is satisfied. Second, the union of any number of sets t belongs to t, uh, you can count those elements, you will find this also satisfied, and the intersection of any two sets t belongs to t. You will count and you will find these also satisfied. So once all these conditions are satisfied, I can call it T1 is a topology on X. So these are how this is how we do. So we give a kind of a figure or a number and then we go one by one apart from the definition. It is satisfied, this satisfied, this satisfied, then we can call it. Topology. 
If one is not satisfied, rest is satisfied, we do not call it as a topology as we will see in further examples. So now you can understand that just like lion and cat and tiger have different specifications in order to give it a definition, so is topology. Okay, let us see another example where we get the values a little bit different, right? So now let us see whether it values x and the empty set y. Yes, it does. The union of any number of set does it? No, it doesn't. Why? Because you will see if I form the union, right, A, C, D and then union of A, C, E, then the two members T2 does not belong to T2. That is, T2 does not satisfy the condition. That is why T2 is not a topology on X, although the third condition is being satisfied. So I was just telling that if one of the conditions is not satisfied, here you can see that T2 is not a topology as the union of this C, D, A, C, E and this one, two members of T2, this one, C and D, these two members, does not belong to T2. So they satisfy not the condition and hence it cannot be called a topology on X. Further examples will make things further clear. Let us say we take this example where the numbers are again are different, different. Then is X and the empty set 5 belongs to T? Yes, it does. This does? Yes. But does the third point satisfy the intersection of any two sets in T belongs to T? No. Why? Because if you do a little bit of calculation, you will see that T3 is not in topology on X. Why? Because this union does not belong to T3 and it doesn't satisfy the condition. Hence, T3 is not a topology on X. So, this is the way, this is the procedure one by one as we take forward and we understand which one is on topology and which one is not on topology. We need to understand and we need to go through these type of definitions and their part. Okay. So, before we leap ahead into the next part of our video, I would like to get a quick recap what we have done till now. So, first we have looked into why do we need topology because of the advancement, because of making things much more broader, easier, we need that. And the concept of generalization is the central. The, we need a separate space that is called a topological space, Euclidean space, from there we moved into metric space and we have also understood what is a topological space and what is topology. So time to move ahead into the next part of our video which is very central and what is an open and a closed set. Okay, so uh, instead of telling things like these are the members of T or these are the members of something, we find a more convenient way to give such sets a name and we call them as open sets. Okay, we have also complements that will come later. So more generally, one defines open sets as the members of a given collection of a given set, a collection that has the property of containing every union of its member, we will see that. So, open set is a generalization of open intervals. We all know what is an open interval. For example, if you have two lines A and B, then the lines do not join. So, we call 0 and 1 means greater than 0 and less than 1. So, open interval, like the way it does not include any point, so does the open set. So, now we take a set S and we take a subset T. Now you see all this, this one, this one, these are subsets, right? So, which has certain properties. Again, definition followed by certain properties. So, what are the properties? The first property is that every union of its members. Now, what do I mean by that? It means that property containing every union of its members should be there. Every finite intersection of its members should be there. There should be the empty set and the whole set itself. So a set in which such a collection is given is called a topological space and the collection is called topology. We have seen that these conditions are very loose and allow enormous flexibility uh, in, in terms of choosing open sets. For example, every subset can be open, right? Or no set be open except the space itself and the empty set. So up till now we have understood that this is how we define an open set. It is just like an open interval. 
So open interval does not include endpoints. Here also we are not including endpoints. And one, two, three, four, every union of its member, every finite intersection, every the empty set and the whole set itself should be there. We will demonstrate further and things we will take on this example forward. So open set provides a method to distinguish between two points. This is utmost important. So in order to distinguish between two points, see the next line says we measure how much the topological space is here without confining it to the distance, definition of a distance. So this is the subset and these are the distances. Distances means it shows how near they are. Okay, so this is very important. So the, this, this, this by far becomes very important because the, the entire sense of topology has to capture the basic properties of closeness. So it turns out that there are two properties that encapsulate the idea we have just seen that these are that the union of any collection of open sets to be open and the intersection of any two sets should be open. So what we are trying to do is that we are trying to measure the nearness. So here the yellow set, this one, this 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 border line, this is basically what is called it satisfied this equation and the internal which is the yellow one satisfies this one. And what we do is that we call the yellow set is an open set, the red set, the border, is basically the boundary set, and the union of the red, yellow and red sets is the closed set, which will be come later. So the the you got the idea that open sets are basically providing a method to distinguish between two points. Here in topology, we don't call points; we call it members of the sets right x y or a b c and we measure how much the topological space is near or far and do not confine it to the notion of distance so the properties that encapsulate this idea and the the, the, the entire space is being defined using open set so that the distance and the restriction are not there. Okay, so first uh, we will see a further example. So if you go ahead with this one, so this is how we define the topological space XT, a subset of X is simply called open if and only if it is an element of T. So rather than speaking of a concrete Euclidean matrix, you one may use sets to describe points. For example, if this is a set and these are the points, okay, I mean to say we don't call it point. And we, so this is this is the one. These are the one. So these are other points should be sufficiently close to it. So the idea of open set is that for each point in the set, the, the red ones, the set should also contain all other points that are sufficiently close to it. We can call it in a different way that in you we should be not be able to approach a point within an open set without entering the set. So openness is an so in metric space we define by this and here we define by this. So openness is an expression of what it means to be close in. In metric space we define closeness by means of distance, but in more general setting like topology it is not uh, possible. So instead we define closeness by a simple listing of what sets we want to be open, and the list is just a set containing all the open sets in the space and which is called the topology. I'm so sorry. Let me, let me let me quickly go back to this one. Yeah. So this is how we define it is in metric space, and this is how we define it topology. So the idea again, I would repeat, is an open set that each point in the set, the set should also contain all other points that are sufficiently close. As you see uh, here in this uh, right hand side, these red dots connect the closeness, right? So openness is an expression of what it means to be close in metric space. We define closeness by distance, but here we define by closeness. Okay, where do we go in the next part of the video? Okay, so what are the axioms? That means, as I told, that what are the conditions of an open set? The first one is the empty collection should be an open set, obviously, because this is true since it has got no members. The second would be an infinite uh, uh, intersection of open set is open. Yes, 
because we just verify the membership in each of the open sets all at one at a time and the union of open sets is an open set why because we just need to verify the membership in the correct option set whether it has got a union or not so these are the conditions which tells that in order to become an open set things will become more clear okay so we come to the mathematical definition of an open set so let x t be an e topological space then the members of t are said to be open sets if yeah so we get a proposition from that if x t is in topological space then x and phi are open sets union of any finite or infinite number of open sets is an open set and the intersection of any finite number of open sets is also an open set now it might crop up in your mind a question that here we are calling on point number 2 the union of any finite or infinite number but various in point number 3 we are calling only the finite number so the question rises is that are in finite intersection of open sets are always open because here we talked about finite infinite but here when you are only talking of finite number so if we get infinite intersection of open sets do we find it to be open let us find out right now in this video so let us assume that n be the set of all positive integers as we know and let us assume that t consists of phi and uh, the complement each subset s of n so that the complement of s is in n and we denote it simply by this which is quite known to all of us and this is a finite set okay so we can easily verify that t actually satisfied this condition it is satisfied this condition the union of number this is also satisfied and this number the third condition it is also satisfied so we can tell that t is a topology on n so right up till now this is quite simple what we are trying to find out is that uh, whether that can be called as infinite topology infinite space is called Okay, so t is a topology on n now we have find now if now what we do is that if we assign a natural number n so that the uh, set s of n is something like this so what we have done i have just added union of n plus 1 and plus 2 dot 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 and it goes up to n plus 1 up to infinity now obviously from here what is very clear is that s of n is a topology on n right it is an open set and topology on n right since its complement is finite set right so but when we take this kind of a thing right uh yes when we take this kind of a thing then what we see that the complement of one is neither in this natural number n or a finite set one is also not open so what it proves is that this part of the equation says that the intersection of the open set sn is not open now so so we have proved that this one is not open so we cannot call that infinite number of intersection of open set can be open we have just proved this okay so where do we go from now we now we define what is a closed set very simple let x of t uh, be any topological space then and our subset s of x is said to be closed if its complement is open this is just the reverse so we call it like this and if i want to make a simplified definition it will be something like a closed set is a set whose complement is an open set and it has got only at its limit spots now if we take the very first example when we were defining topology and topological space then if you rearrange them in this way then we find this to be a closed set i am not going to explain it right now i will say how this is going to be an open set it's just that you see the complements then x p c t f and you arrange then this become a closed set this is just to give you an example that how we can use these points or these elements in order to define a closed set okay so the proposition from it comes is that if x t be any any topological space then first phi and x are closed sets the intersection of any finite or infinite number set is a closed set and the uniform union of any finite or infinite is also a closed set so the first part phi and x are closed sets how we can prove 
It is simple because x and the empty set phi belongs to T. So phi and x are closed set. That comes from uh, com the rules of the, uh, you know, this, this complementary part. So this is being proved. Now, what we need to prove is the second part that you, uh, S1 union S2 dot 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 uh, so on is a closed set. So let us see how we can do that. So we need to prove this. This is being known. Now we are required to, uh, you know, if you take this definition, which is the definition, uh, this one, let x t and the closed set. Then what we si see is that this one is an open set. Why it is an open set? Because s1, s2 dot dot up to sn is a closed set. So their complements, this one, are also open sets. But, however, you see this. This one. If I form this in the union and the intersection of x, then this left hand side part, the, sorry, the left, yeah, the left hand side part is an uh, open set because it is a finite collection and this is also finite intersection of open sets. So from here, what we can deduce is that, yes, S1, S2, S dot 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 Sn is a closed set. So the right hand side is a finite intersection of open sets. So, and if it is open set, the left hand side of the, uh, is also, uh, is an open set. So from that we deduce that S1, S2, and Sn is an open set. So, th that is how we define what is an open set and we do the different theorems and calculations. So, up till now, what we have learned is that there is an open set, there is a closed set. But what about both? Then can we have something which is both open and closed? Yes. The answer is yes. And that will be the next video in which we will be learning that. So, we have come to the end of this video. Let us summarize what we have learned. We have learned why there is a need for topology. What is the purpose of topology? There is a need for different space because Euclidean axioms won't work. So, the evolution of mathematical space from Euclidean to topology. Defining topology, intuitive and the mathematical notion. We have also seen what is the topological space in terms of illustrations and mathematical notion. We have also seen what is an open set, a closed set and simple proofs which would prove either it is an open set or a closed set or a union or something like that. So this completes our video today. Uh, if you have missed my other video, I would request you to look into my playlist because that video was the foundation. So we are dealing with those fundamental concepts one by one. So in the next video, we will see what is both open and closed set and further what are the uh, concepts like compactness, closeness, etc. which will be coming up in the next video. Thank you very much for watching this video. You have been a tremendous support. So please keep on supporting me so that I can keep on producing more and more videos of physics and mathematics. Please do click on the bell icon and click on the all option so that you get all the notification about videos and interesting topics from Physics for Students. This is Shaunak signing off today from Physics from Students, wishing you a great weekend ahead and promising you to come back with a very interesting topic on physics and mathematics. Till then, all the best, best wishes and goodbye. Now, you can be a part of our team. You can send your scientific articles, essays, research papers, lesson plans on a particular subject of science. For further details, please write to us at editor at physicsforstudents.com. Stay safe and happy.